Hello everyone. Welcome back to Be Again Books. This is Kathleen Maurer and I'm back with part two of the weathering of steampunk. And today I want to teach you how to make rust paper with acrylic paint. It's it's a painting technique, a brush stroke technique again. We can do the same thing we did in the last video where we used a sponge. So we could use the same sponge and just the rust colors and the same technique and get a similar look to the patina that we did in the last video. But because rust is a little more weathered, a little more distressed, a little more decayed often than patina, I want to show you how to just use a brush and the brush strokes so that it looks just a little rougher. Um, so here's one finished piece. And of course, rust has different colors. Some is more orangey, some is darker. I brought a piece of rusted metal so that you could see that, you know, sometimes depending on what the metal is, it will rust differently and the composition of the, the metal, how much iron is in it, that kind of thing. Um, so please don't worry about uh, what your color looks like because if it has these three colors that I'm gonna show you, um, it will look rusty. So let's, oh, I also wanted to show you that you don't necessarily have to do the whole, the whole page. You can make kind of a rusty, an aesthetic without painting the whole page. So let's um, get started and I'll, I'll tell you what you need. So today we're going to use uh, coffee dyed paper. So just start with a couple sheets of coffee dyed paper. I'm going to do it in this um, kind of rusty cookie sheet. And so I want to um, tape it down a little. I just have these little um, tape rolls and I have uh, put it against my clothing to make it just not very tacky. I'm just gonna put one under the, that corner and one under this corner. And that's just um, to give me a little bit of stability so that the paper doesn't move around. Okay, now you'll need a paintbrush and you can, depending on how you want to do it, you can use different sizes um, and certainly depending on how big your paper is. Maybe you're just doing an index card and that would be easy to do with a smaller brush. But since we're going to do a bigger piece, I'm going to use a bigger brush. And then you're going to need three colors of acrylic paint. And I'm just using a paper plate as my palette. So the rest colors are yellow ochre, raw umber, and burnt sienna. Those are artist colors. Now, if you just have the little tubes or the little bottles of paint, then they may not be named that. And so just use some similar um, colors, a rusty red, uh, a gold mustardy yellow, and a dark brown. Okay, so I just am going to need to put some on my palette. And I'm doing it in kind of in, in a strip. And I'll show you why. And, and that's because there's a technique for loading the brush for this. This is all based on a particular brush stroke. Let's just use a regular white piece of paper. And it's a combination of the way the brush is loaded and the way um, you move the brush. You're gonna load one side and then you're gonna turn it over and load the other side. Okay, so you have paint on one side and the other side. And then just on the ends, you're gonna pick up a little bit of brown. Okay, so now we've got our brush loaded 
and we're just going to do a stroke like this kind of like this and then like this okay that's the stroke and you want to just keep doing that so here we go on our page I think I'll maybe just start in the middle and work my way out to either side so we're gonna go down and down and then load again pick up the brown and then we're gonna start to blend it so as we do that we just keep you know putting the paint on but we're going to blend what came before and we want to just keep that kind of that that circular now you know why we need the tape because otherwise the paint will move okay put a little bit more paint on and then whoops I forgot to pick up the brown That's all there is to it, really. Once you just kind of get the hang of that brush stroke. And you just keep doing that and um, kind of blending as you go. You want to cover the edges. So this kind of gives some depth. Whoops, I keep forgetting to pick up that brown. It just gives some depth movement and and it it doesn't it blends it, but it doesn't have doesn't leave a pattern to the strokes. I know you're all saying you didn't get the brown. So I can kind of come back if I need. So this is this is quite rusty. It might need a little bit more brown. And that is just purely your your um, preference. And you just kind of go back and forth just like that. Let me take this and dry it and I'll see I'll let you see how it's turned out okay there's that piece of decorative journal paper and of course you've just got the regular coffee dye still on the back and sometimes yeah you get these little pieces of, of um, marks on the other side but that doesn't bother me I hope it doesn't bother you not when you get the rest of the you know, journaling stuff in there. So now we have several pretty rusted papers. Here's the one we just did. This is a little bit red for me, but I want to do a, a steampunky stencil. And I could use this number stencil, which I will definitely use in the journal. But I think what I want to do is use this big um, this big damask pattern and I think I will put it just a little bit off center I do want to have it be straight so I'll kind of line it up and then I'm just going to use a little um, dauber sponge 
and we'll stencil this damask pattern, which is a very steampunk type of pattern. And I love to stencil. I, I have for many years stenciled on all kinds of things, clothing and <laughs> yeah, dish towels. I love it. And if you are a beginner stencil make, you know, designer, then you honestly may want to tape everything down. I just don't worry about that anymore, but You, you might not want to take a chance on ruining the paper that you've just made. So you want to come straight up and down. You don't want to move like that at all. Swiping, no. You want just to move straight up and down. And you don't want gobs of paint on. You have these funny little things right here that sometimes the stencil isn't always cooperative but I'm gonna hope that it's gonna look good when I'm done Here's the reveal. Yeah, there we go. I like that. Yeah, I do like it. So I've left it a little bit off center to, to leave some room over here. And then this is going to be folded. And possibly I'll use this in the middle of a signature. But I like that. Let me dry it. Okay, now I want to round the corners. And then we'll add just a little bit of Distress ink around the edge. That's gonna define the edge and make kind of a blended look. Kind of finishes it off, I think. Okay, can you see now those edges? This this looks really great to me. I I like the way it's turned out. Here's the back, so it can be folded. But I think I'm going to use it in the center, so we'll fold it this way. Yeah, and then we'll put a pocket or something here. Like it. All right. So there's a little stack of rusted papers for the Steampunk Journal. And I'm anxious to get started on putting the signature together. Thanks for being with me, and we'll see you again with the next video.